Hey everybody, thanks for joining me on another video series. I'm here with Maury Hannigan, who is the CEO at uh, uh, Spark Start, right? Got it. <laughs> got right. it. Awesome, yep. awesome. So we've got a really exciting topic to talk about today. Um, you can see the title right behind me. But before we get into talking about video, Maury, could you quick give our audience a little bit of background on, on you? Sure. Um, I started my career at Procter & Gamble in marketing, so I'm a classic consumer packaged goods marketer by training and mindset. Um, and I did a lot of recruiting for P&G, and then I moved over to Pepsi where I did marketing again. Um, and I realized that all the things that good marketers do are the same things that good recruiters do, right? They're really very much the same. The difference is that that HR talent acquisition folks didn't have anywhere near the tools that the corporate brand people did. Um, from a marketing perspective, we understand that video is, pers is persuasive. We know how to get people's attention. Um, and on the HR side, we weren't doing all of that. So I started Spark Start, um, which incorporates hiring manager video into job descriptions and has video management systems um, to really let HR use the tools that the rest of the organization has been using for decades, quite yeah. honestly. Yeah. So that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, as a marketer, obviously, I love video. I'm using it right now. You, I know, are a huge <laughs> advocate, obviously, of video. Yep. Um, and I think that there is uh, been kind of a little bit of a, uh, there's been progress in talent acquisition, I think, with video, but yep. we have a long way to go. Uh, I think there's still a lot of challenges that TA folks are, are bumping into, right, when it comes to uh, adopting video, using video. There's lots of questions uh, around, you know, how do I do it? Does it need to be highly produced? Can it kind of just be down and dirty and unscripted? And so today, I was hoping we could, you know, cover all of those video nightmares that TA folks are, are running into. And, and Maury, I know you sent me a list of some of the biggest, I guess, challenges that you see uh, recruiters are facing when it comes to video. And I was hoping we could just walk through this list and, you know, I'll read one of the points that you sent over to me and then, hope, you know, hoping that you could just comment on it and talk about how, how that's a challenge and how recruiters can overcome it. Okay. Cool. Glad to. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. Good. So the first one on the list is cost. Tell me about cost. <laughs> ah, cost is what trips up a lot of people. Um, traditionally, what TA has done is produce a recruiting video, right? This two-minute generic beauty shots of the building, a couple random people talking. Um, they bring in a third-party production company. And depending on who you get, some of those – we've seen some of those videos go easily into six figures – um, we've heard rumor, and I won't name the company, um, that have spent seven figures on their recruiting, uh, you know, on their big billboard recruiting video. Um, and so everybody goes, oh, we can't, we can't possibly produce video. You know, the cost is too high. So you get one video and you use it for a couple of years. That's, that's just not necessary in this day and age. Um, first of all, there are good production companies that will do video for less than six figures, to say the least. Um, if you, if you really are dependent on high quality professionally produced video, but where the market is going is much more informally produced and, and, and formally generated video. Um, everybody's walking around with a high def camera in their pocket. And the amount of video that you need, um, you, you just can't afford to do everything highly produced. So there's, a, there's room for both, for both the, the formal produced video and for the informal video. But it doesn't have to cost a lot of money to be high quality. So one of the first things that TA needs to do is, is kind of wrestle that budget out of marketing um, so you don't necessarily go back to your, you know, your big agencies with the big six-figure budgets. You need to get much more agile than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's right. It's not a, it's not a one or the other. It's, it's a mix, right? There yeah. is a, yeah. there is a place for the highly produced. Maybe not yep. six figures all the time, but yeah, there is a place for that. <laughs> and then there's a place for just using Skype or, or using your phone, and, and you know that can yeah. work out just as well. So, yeah. um, okay. So point number two is content. Talk to me about content. <laughs> this, this is where. So many people get stymied. The, the reality is nobody wants to watch a generic video or a, a general video that doesn't really give them information that's valuable to them. And the reality is, particularly when you're talking about candidates, they're very specific in their information needs. So if you're recruiting somebody for your finance department, um, if they're going to work on a derivatives desk, they could really care less about treasury issues. 
If someone's going to work in treasury, they don't want to hear about derivatives. Um, and so TA people go, oh, my God, I can't possibly produce thousands and thousands of videos. Um, I can't cover everything. So what happens is when they're kind of married to this idea of the big corporate video is they produce one very general thing that anybody can use. The problem is it's not useful to anybody. Um, and so that becomes the problem of how do you produce video that really does inform an individual candidate to convince them to take the next step in the process, whether that's applying or um, responding to a recruiter that's reached out to them. How do you give them video that's meaningful? Um, and the content piece is really important. And that's where you have to go to informal video. Um, you have to produce sometimes hundreds, um, sometimes thousands of individual videos. Um, and that's doable. That's doable. The technology lets you do that at scale these days. Yeah, I mean, and even <clears throat> beyond the the scaling question, I just you gotta you gotta stop and think about like, you know, I can't be everything to everybody with just one video. You know, even thinking about like, you know, again, marketers they are all about targeting and you know, segmenting and targeting their their um, their audience, and, yeah. and they know that that's because they need to personalize that message to what is important to that group. And, you know, it's, it, it seems like common sense. And I know that there could be some pushback because like you said, you might have to make a hundred vi different videos in order to make sure that that message is sticky for that particular audience. But that's the only way in which you're going to get your content to work. So right, I love that. Right. And the question is, do you want results? Yeah. Uh, you know, you could produce lots of lovely videos that have beauty shots of the building and all this kind of thing. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we really believe you've got to move the needle. Did you attract more qualified candidates? Did you get a, you know, a, a richer applicant pool? Yeah. Um, and if you didn't, then you got to really question how you're spending your money and where. Totally. So totally. we're really big on results driven content. Well, so uh, the next point here, and speaking of results, I'm, I'm going to just steal the stat that you sent me, but you, you, you wrote that, uh, uh, so point number three here is exposure, and you said that research says that only 1.5% of career site visitors uh, ever watch uh, your videos, um, and yeah. posting on YouTube doesn't generate views. So like, how do you get exposure? Uh, well, um the, the question is not so much how do you get exposure as how do you get exposure in your target audience. Okay. If you're trying to recruit you know, hospital lab technicians, you really don't want your, your video or anything else in front of a systems engineer. Right? It, it doesn't do any good. So right now, social media is the most effective way to actually connect with your target audience. Uh, lots of organizations are building um, talent communities. And they've got people who are interested in very specific jobs. So it, this is marketing 101. It's who is your target audience and how are you getting in front of them? Right. Um, general kinds of things. The, the study you referenced was one actually done by Career Builder. They did a really nice and, and impactful study. They looked at 5,000 uh, career sites. And almost everyone, 92.5% of all visitors, just went to the job posting page because either Indeed led them there or recruiters are reaching out with links back there. So they went in, they looked at the job they were interested or not interested in, either applied or left. Um, only 7.5% of visitors ever went to the homepage or the career site. Mm. And of that, only 1.5% ever watched the video because the video they knew was going to be a general commercial kind of thing. Um, so that doesn't do it for you. Posting – YouTube's its own problem with all the noise and the distractions and the clickbait and all the rest of it. Um, but given the sheer volume of stuff uploaded to YouTube every day, the odds that a candidate's going to trip across your video, you're going to have to drive all your traffic there. So we really believe that um, the, the best way to get seen is, first of all, understand where you want the exposure. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't want 400,000 views most likely, not if you've really targeted your content, um, but if you want quality assurance managers, you know, who are they, where are they, how many of them are there, and how many of them can you get to see your content? That's when you start getting result-driven strategies here. Um, so that's that's the big thing. Understand who you're trying to to get the eyeballs of, and then where are their eyeballs now, and, and how do you put it there? And generally, social media is the way you do that. Yeah, no, I think, again, uh, the parallel in marketing is there's this concept called account-based marketing, and it's you yeah. define an actual company that you're going after, you understand where it is those employees hang out online or it, you know just yep. in their daily lives, and then you create specific content for that company, and then you 
promote it, distribute it via those channels where those employees hang out. And I think the same yeah. thing applies here. It's like you're going out. It's like it's almost like job seeker specific marketing or you know mm -hmm. job group specific yeah. marketing, uh, recruitment marketing. Yeah. So. I think yep. that's great. Yeah. Um, so I think exposure and distribution kind of uh, were paired together there um, based on the points that you sent over. So I'll skip down to huh. quality. Talk to me about quality of videos. What, 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 what do we need to be making? And should employees be making videos, I guess is the question. Um, absolutely, employees should be making videos. The, the quality, I think what, what we hear a lot in particularly large enterprises is – you know, they're very professional, they're very protective of their brand and their image, and they believe they have to have professionally produced video that will reflect their level of professionalism. Um, but in that is the assumption that informal video is low quality, and that's not necessarily the case. The reality is all the cameras on phones right now are high def cameras and they're incredible. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're often on par with professional cameras. Um, as a matter of fact, they're most often on par with professional cameras. So the quality doesn't have to be bad. Um, do your, your employees need some tips about lighting, you know, certainly not to stand in front of a window because they're going to get silhouetted because the light behind them is going to, you know, outshine them. Um, yes, you absolutely need some of those tips and so forth. But I mean, on the, on the Spark Start system, we've got literally thousands and thousands of employee generated video that's been uploaded. And I'm happy to put you know, some of those videos side by side with professionally produced. Um, they're short clips from employees and it works. Um, the biggest issue that you have with employee generated video is usually sound because the microphone and cameras are really designed to be, you know, recording at very close range. Mm -hmm. So if you're using your camera to record someone who's several feet away from you, you do have a lot of, of degradation in, in sound quality. So there, a lavalier mic is a, you can buy a, a really decent quality lavalier mic for $7 right now online. Um, you know, you don't need a lot of expensive equipment. So you just put it on somebody's collar and plug it into your phone and away you go. So you don't have to lose quality. And the reality is most people are watching your content on their phones. So they're watching it on this little tiny screen. Right. This is not being broadcast on the side of a building. Um, one of the things we do actually is we take down the resolution in videos so that they load instantly on phones. So you, nobody wants to watch that little circle going around, you know, loading. You lose people that way. Um, and to be honest, we've never had a client who's noticed. We tell them we do it, but um, it's imperceptible on a little tiny screen. Yeah. You don't need high def. So what you need is really fast loading. So if somebody pushes it, it starts to play instantly and you, you capture their attention. Um, but the quality thing, there's this, this disbelief that you can have high quality when you do employee generated. And that's just not the case. You can do really, really good stuff. Uh, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I mean, I've, I've actually run into a bind where I didn't have a, a mic with me and um, I wanted to shoot a video. And uh, so I had my wife use her phone to shoot the video and I used my phone as a mic <laughs> and just talked yep. into the mic. And so I had the video file and the audio file and then mashed them up afterwards. And the audio actually sounded pretty fantastic. So uh, yeah. you don't even need to buy that $7 mic. You can just use your phone. <laughs> uh, right. Well, and, and look, seriously. Look at what we're doing here. Um, you have written on a whiteboard behind you, yeah. right? Talk about low tech. This is as low tech, inexpensive as possible. And lots of people can argue with the quality of it. They do or don't like your handwriting. But the point is you've communicated. You've communicated effectively what we're talking about. Right. And at the end of the day, that's what you're doing. You're not in the video production business. You're in the communications business. Yeah. If you're an employer brand person, you're trying to communicate your employer brand. You're not trying to do, you know, show that you can do the latest, greatest um, high tech boom mic kind of thing. You just want to communicate. And if you can communicate effectively and professionally, I'm not recommending people do things that's sloppy and hard to hear and, and badly lit and so forth, but you don't have to do one or the other. You can communicate mm -hmm. very effectively, mm -hmm. very informally. I mean, here's the way I look at it. It's almost like uh, I, I just want you know the video quality, the lighting, and the audio to actually just be – I don't want people to be thinking about it. I want them to immediately get immersed into the conversation that we're yes. happening so that they're not even they're not distracted by anything else. And that doesn't mean it has to be highly produced. It just means it needs to be hit a certain threshold and then focus on the, the content that, that's on the video because that's what you yeah. want. 
exactly. It's all about communicating and just um, getting the job done. And and in part, you're able to do a lot of videos because you haven't made a big production out of this. So you're producing a ton of content and communicating a ton. I say that's more effective than somebody who once a quarter or once a year produces something, you know, that may be beautiful to look at, um, but has a, a, you know, a fraction of the kind of impact that you're having. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know you and I, Maury, like, you know, we're very comfortable getting on video, but that doesn't apply to everyone. And one of your points here <laughs> was, I love it. It's video phobia. So, you know, can you get people that refuse to do video? Can, can you get them to, to actually participate? Uh, you, you can. Videophobia is a real thing. Um, I happen to be married to one of the most videophobic men on the planet, <laughs> um, which drives me nuts. Um, and early on when I launched this company, I needed just some example videos. It's like, you know, would you just make a video? He's like, oh, I can't. It's like, uh, but <laughs> um, so, so there are some folks, you know, you're, you're never going to push to make video. But the reality is most most people, while they may object – their real fear is of looking foolish, right? They, they don't want to look stupid. They don't want to look way too animated or absolutely strict. It's right. Um, and, and they get worried of how they're going to come across. Um, so, you know, there, there are lots of tips and tricks of the trade that you do this, um, particularly when you're shooting um, informal employee generated video. If you've got a couple of videos that that are the kind of content and tone that you want, just showing those to employees. I mean, we do this all the time with hiring manager video. It's like, let me just show you two of your peers. You know, this is the video that George did. This is the video that Anna did. Um, this is kind of what we're looking for. And and there's a little bit of seeing their peers do it. They go, oh, if, if George can do it, I right. can do it. Right. <laughs> George, you know. Um, and it's like, oh, it, it's short, it's simple, it's quick. Um, it really helps them understand what's expected of them. And that's your biggest barrier is them not knowing what they want to do. We, we really feel strongly that you don't script people. Um, when you try to script your employees, they're not professional actors. They, they can't pull it off. They are mm -hmm. going to read and you are going to tell that they are reading. Um, so, <laughs> you know, there's just no way you get around that. Right. Um, so you give them prompts. You want to help structure their remarks, but you give them prompts so you, they know, you know, how do they start it? How do they end it? A big thing is how do you end it? Most people don't know how to end a video, so they just keep talking. Um, but you know, you can work with folks that can help you do those kinds of things. It's all doable. You can get over the video phobia. Absolutely. Yeah, except for my husband. Except for your husband. Yeah. I'm not, and I'm not sure. I don't know if my wife likes to get in front of the cam, uh, camera either, but uh, she's a great photographer. So, ah, there you have it. <laughs> so you, you kind of alluded to this earlier, um, you know, the, the, the approval process, you know, marketers and, you know, PR, and there's just always different groups. I feel like that are trying to, you know, suppress or put in more red tape. Um, uh, as far as the approval goes, can you can you talk about like what you're seeing as far as approval processes and uh, you know kind of how you handle that? Well, there there are two aspects to it. One is how many people need to approve a 30 second video, um, and, and there's a little bit of sometimes you need to stop and go. Look, we we had a. a, a client here in New York, one of the financial services firms, um, where legal insisted that they needed to approve all the videos because that's what legal does. Yeah. Um, and, and some poor attorney sat and watched, you know, I think three or four of these 20 second hiring manager clips. And he went, oh, for God's sakes, you don't need three years yeah. of law school to do this. This is nuts. <laughs> um, it's like, okay. Yeah. So we understood you. Um, so he sent it back to HR where it belonged because HR, if you hire professionals, they understand what's proprietary. They understand what's on brand. Um, if you really trust your recruiters, we'd like to say you should trust them with the video. Um, but there are a couple problems. I mean, we work with right now working with a defense contractor who's got some very, you know, legitimate security issues. And, right. and there's a process right. there that has to be, you know, a martin. And, and we respect that. Um, but the first question you ask is really who needs to see these videos? Um, but the other problem and one of the things that makes video tough is it's hard to keep track, particularly if you're starting to do video at scale, is how do you keep track of what's approved and what's not? Um, you know, you can't email videos around. They're too big to get through almost all corporate firewalls. The fires, files are too big. Um, so it's not like you can email them to John and then email them to George and then email them to Mary and so forth um, and keep track of what's approved and what's not. Um, that that gets hard in making sure you've got stuff that's approved. Um, you know, one of the, the issues even with, with YouTube is 
anybody can upload a video to YouTube um, and you don't have any approval at all. We, we saw one organization where the employees thought they were doing a good thing. They filmed, they had actually an after work um, happy hour on premise um, and they took video of everybody with beer bottles and you know, yeah. all of this. Um, corporate was not amused. Yeah, um, I can see that. <laughs> um, so, you know, you want to have some kind of video management platform where you can upload videos and people can approve and comment and that kind of stuff. Um, videos are hard. You can't mark them approved. You can't email them with, you know, a string of who approves and who doesn't. So you just, here's a, a place where you just need the right tools to actually manage it. And then, you know, there are lots of them out there. We have one, but there are lots of good ones that are easy. They're not expensive and um, makes life easier. Um, so does that cover, I know your points, uh, your last couple points here was, you know, kind of on the technical side as well about moving videos around and, and hosting videos. I mean, that, I guess that kind of relates to what you were you know, saying right there. Anything else to add for those points? Um, yeah, um, we're, we're talking to folks, we're talking to, to one employer brand uh, executive who said she thinks she's got something like 300 videos that are being used for, um, you know, some aspect of TA. Um, and she's actually creating an Excel spreadsheet just to figure out what's out there and who's got it and who's hosting it. <laughs> um, and, and then figuring out how to access it and whether it's up to date, whether it's been approved, all that kind of stuff. That's just a nightmare and a half. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and where these videos get hosted. I mean, for, for most of TA, it's really hard to access these things. Um, some of them are sitting on corporate servers w with limited you know, access to share a link there. Um, I, I will tell you, I am not a fan of hosting videos on YouTube. There's just, YouTube is brilliant at clickbait, right? They're really good at this. So let's just give them their due. Um, they know exactly what you want to watch. And what you want to watch is probably not a recruiting video. Right. So, you know, in, in my case, every time I open a video on YouTube, um, I've got all those temptations on the right-hand column. You know, here's a Game of Thrones. Here's another, you know, John Oliver session you've missed. Here's another. <laughs> it's like. Oh, yeah, that actually looks much more interesting. For than sure. I'm the same um, way. A music yeah. concert of a band you love. Yes, there it is. Oh, God, let me just look at that interview. Um, so people host things on YouTube, and it's just – it's not the kind of professional environment where you want to share your recruiting and your, your talent acquisition videos or your branding videos. So um, all of those things are, are real issues. And then you go back to just having the right platform, right? You just need to put them in the right platform where videos are viewed on a dedicated branded page where at the end of the video, it's not up next, you know, the car guy um, sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. that's that's part of just, I think particularly employer brand is a little behind, um, you know, other organizations and just having these kind of core tools so that you manage your videos well. You've got them in one place. Your recruiters have got access to all of them. You're assured, assured that your videos are brand appropriate and brand approved um, and they're up to date. Um, it's it just, in that case, it's just getting the right tools to do right. it. That's and, and having it easy to grab uh, either a shareable link or the embed code so you can put it on some sort of other digital asset, I think is, is also important as well. Um, yep. So I just counted the, the, all the points here. So we've done nine, and there's one more. So there's 10 total. It's one of my favorite ones, which is the, the data and metrics. And you know, how, do you, how, how should we be measuring the ROI on video? Uh, well, well, let's start with some of the traps out there. Um, we are seeing vendors that are – that are – presenting metrics and dashboards and things to folks that really have very little relevance to how powerful or persuasive they are. Um, we've actually, we've looked at one platform that will tell you what, um, what internet service provider was used to watch the video. So it tells you that it was Spectrum or it was Cox. <laughs> it was like, why? Wow. Like, I'm, I'm going to do what with that piece of data? Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, you know, but oh, we've got the dashboard. We've got all this information. Um, and I keep going back to, I'm a big believer, decision data. If the number is high, are you going to do something different than if the number's low? If the number's just a, oh, 76, <laughs> yeah. what are you going to do different? Right. Um, if you're not going to do something different, it's clutter. Yeah. Um, you know, there's enough data you need to look at that will help you adjust your strategy or do something different. You don't need to spend time looking at, you know, nice to know numbers. The, the, one of the big ones I see is finish rates. 
you know, what, what's, what percent of people finished this video? Well, if you're in TA, you want to keep your videos under 30 seconds. That, that's almost a hard and fast rule, um, particularly if you're looking at the front end of a job search. Until a candidate is actually committed to, you know, a job or a career or something, if they're still in exploratory mode, they're not going to watch something longer than 30 seconds. And we've got a lot of data that says yeah. your viewership drops in half if your video is longer than 30 seconds. And it's not that people watch the first 30 seconds. Um, if I sent you a video right now that's nine minutes long, you'd probably look at it and go, mm, I haven't got nine minutes to watch this thing. Right. If I sent you a video that was 17 seconds long, like ah, for 17 Here seconds, is. what's the deal? Yeah. Um, we don't watch the first 17 seconds of a nine minute video. We look at the total length and determine whether or not we're going to click play. It's just how we all operate. So let's accept that's the behavior um, and, and modify to it. So at the very beginning of a job search, until someone's committed to really investigate a company or be part of the recruitment process, they're not going to watch something over 30 seconds. Um, so you want to keep things really, really short. Um, we could talk more about length. Sorry, I digress there. But it, it, it's a piece oh, yeah, of this. Yeah. You know, When you get to the metrics and you look at finish rates, if your video is 24 seconds or 26 seconds, whatever, Whatever, there are very few people who turn off a video for the last four seconds. You know, when they're that short, once you've committed you, for particularly something that short, you tend to watch it through. Mm -hmm. So, and so let's even say, suppose 80% of your people clicked off the video, you know, at the 26 second mark. What are you going to do differently now? It, does that really help you? Does that tell you anything that you can really be actionable? You know, I mentioned I started my career at P&G. And at P&G, we had, you know, the big major agencies that did all kinds of content testing to really look at, you know, eyeballs and things. And, and at P&G, you really could adjust a 30-second commercial because you'd spent 200 grand testing it. Right, right. <laughs> um, nobody in TA is spending 200 grand. No. Um, you don't know what it is that made the person turn it off. You don't have side by side A B comparisons. You don't know what to adjust next. So you're you really can't do anything different with that. What I think is important is how many people viewed this video. You know, did you get it in front of your target audience? And then how many people applied? <laughs> and how many of those people? Actually, I, I think one of the important metrics is really in the yield on your phone screens. Are the people who are applying, did they learn enough about the job so they made a well-informed decision to opt in or opt out? Mm. Did the people who applied, are mm -hmm. they interested, available, and qualified? Mm -hmm. um, you know, did they, if they look at a text-only job description, the data tells us they're not reading it. So they apply kind of willy-nilly. So your recruiter calls them. They go, oh, I didn't realize it was 25% travel. I'm a single mom. I can't do that. Um, you know, your recruiter wasted time. Yeah. The candidate wasted time. Yeah. Those phone screens, you want to have people who actually learn something about the job and understand why they're applying for it. So those are the kind of metrics. Like, never mind the finish rates on your videos. Um, look at, are you generating qualified candidates? Yeah. If you're doing that, you've got a powerful tool here. If you're not doing that, then you've got to go back to the drawing board. Um, yeah. But really, don't get so crazy about the, the video kind of metrics. Um, that you're not paying attention to, did you communicate effectively, and did you drive results? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think I think that you, you're right. I mean, you, you have to start to at least you know qualitatively or you know anecdotally start to assess the quality of the candidates that are coming through, or use some of these top level metrics to say, look. When we added video to job descriptions, conversion rates went up or conversion rates stayed yeah. the same. But I've just talked to this cohort of 10 people that we saw come through the video scenario versus 10 people that came before we added the video. And the quality is much higher. You know, there was, you know, the same number of people, but they just they get the job better. They, they are much more you know, committed to wanting to move through yeah. with this and it's saving us time, energy, and there's a better, you know, fit and match. So yeah, I, t I totally yeah. agree with you. Absolutely. I mean, we've, we've got lots of hard data that says when you add a hiring manager video, not a generic video, but you actually add the hiring manager to your job description, your conversion rate of visitors to applicants skyrockets. Oh, it goes up go. at least. Yeah, it's, it's there. But the bigger thing is you want that quality to go up. You know, we, we say all the time, you don't want more applicants. You want more qualified applicants. Nobody wants a thousand applicants. There probably aren't a thousand people qualified for any given job. Um, so it's not about getting more applicants. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. It's you want to look at are the right people applying. 
Um, if that's happening, now you've got something. Now you're really, you know, now you're trying to truly be a strategic sourcing organization as opposed to let's just go out and see how many people we can get to randomly apply. Um, that just that just clogs up your system and slows down all the, the efficiency. Definitely, definitely. Well, Maury, these 10 points are fantastic. I hope people can now, you know, go to sleep better knowing that that video, <laughs> <laughs> video really is a powerful tool. There's so many different ways you can use it yeah. and, and, you know, measure it. And I think that you've done an incredible job of covering all this today. You know, before we end here, I just wanted to, you know, give you another chance to just talk about how can people connect with you and uh, where oh, can they find you? Absolutely. Um, the easy thing is my email. I'm Maury at sparkstart.com. Um, you can go to sparkstart.com. That's spark with a C, S-P-A-R-C-S-T-A-R-T. Um, and we've got a lot of case studies there. We've got data um, on our website about video. We also, we keep a gallery of um, really impactful videos and we've got video everything from talent attraction to conversion um, if you just want to see some good examples and we've pulled them from all over different industries different producers and so forth um, lots of rich information on sparkstart.com awesome well thank you for your time today Maury I you know people Great. are going to learn a lot and uh, hopefully we can do this again next time in person right uh, you <laughs> lunch is included I hear if I, if I play my cards right <laughs> Awesome. Well, have a great day, Maury. Thank you so okay, much. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching another episode of Talent Acquisition Talks. And if you're looking for more content just like this, make sure you head over to brazen.com slash TA Talks and sign up for our weekly video newsletter. We've got interviews with some of the top minds in TA, and we don't want you to miss it. So again, head over to brazen.com slash TA Talks, sign up now, and I'll see you next week.